when God blesses you, even your chicken in your household become blessed. Praise the Lord. The roaches in your household become blessed. Everyone around you becomes blessed. May the Lord bless you. Hallelujah. You are welcome into Inner Court Sanctuary. May the favor of God be with you. Can you please take your Bibles? Turn quickly with me to 1 Kings. Praise the Lord. I'm reading from verse 8. Can someone give me, let me use my watch. I can't see the, watch, the clock at the back. I'm reading from verse 8. Oh, <laughs> chapter 17. Thank you. Did I say the book there? Yes. Bo First Kings, right? Oh, okay, thank you. First Kings chapter 17, verse 8. Chapter 17, verse 8. Are you there? If you are still looking, say, I'm still looking. Still searching. If you are lost, say, I'm lost. Lost? You are there. If you are sinking too, say, I'm sinking. All right, we are all there. Good. First Kings chapter 17, verse 8 downwards. Then the word of the Lord came to him, saying, Arise, go to Zarephath, which belongs to Sidon, and dwell there. See, I have commanded a widow there to provide for you. So he arose and went to Zarephath, and when he came to the gate of, of the city, indeed, a widow was there gathering sticks, and he called to her and said, Please bring me a little water in a cup that I may drink. And as she was going to get it, he called to her and said, Please bring me a morsel of bread in your hand. So she said, As the Lord your God lives, I do not have bread, only a handful of flour in a bin, and a little oil in a jar. And see, I am gathering a couple of sticks that I may go in and prepare it for myself and my son that we may eat it and die. And Elijah said to her, Do not fear, go and do as you have said, but make me a small cake from it first, and bring it to me, and afterward make some for yourself and your son. For thus says the Lord God of Israel, The bean of your flour, of flour shall not be used up, nor shall the jar of oil run dry until the day the Lord sends rain on the earth. So she went away and did according to the word of Elijah, and, she's, and she and he and her household ate for many days. The bean of flour was not used up, nor did, it, did the jar of oil run dry according to the word of the Lord, which he spoke by Elijah. Amen. Can someone say amen? This is a story about Elijah and a woman called the Zarephath woman. The woman at Zarephath. The Bible says that during the times of Elijah, and in those days, the kings, some of the kings were not much into doing the things that God wants them to do. Sometimes they will follow God to a, a, a stage and they will turn their back onto God. But then the Bible says that one day Elijah stood before the king of the king of Gilead, the inhabitants of Gilead, the king Ahab, and said that by my word and according to that which is upon me, the mantle is that is upon me, there shall not be rain nor dew. The scripture says that when Elijah gave this word, and tr truly it happened according to what he said. Amen. And right there, God took him from that situation in that state where you find that there was no water no rain coming and the land became so dry the land was what dry very very dry and nothing was coming out of the grounds you couldn't plant anything there were so many many sort of problems that were going on in the city or in the on the land there was farming people could not find food to eat 
But God spoke to Elijah and said to him, Go and hide yourself at a brook. And when you go there, I, the Lord, I have commanded a raven to come and feed you there. Anytime I read this scripture, it really tells me who sometimes makes me understand the operations of God. God has not risen like the way we do things. And that makes him God. How could man, very hungry, need food, you asking him to go and sit somewhere and you provide food. But the Bible says that the provision of the food was going to be brought by a raven, a bed. Who cooked it? Who sent the bed? Where did the bed get the food from? But by the instructions that God gave to Elijah, he went and stood there. And one day whilst he was sitting by the brook enjoying himself and, and under the heat of the sun, all of a sudden he heard a, a, a bed coming. I, I, I sometimes try to picture how the bed brought the food. Was it in a basket? Was it in a bowl? How was it wrapped? I can't figure it out. But what I can understand from the scriptures is that God sent food to Elijah. Praise the Lord. The food got to Elijah. It, it went straight it to Elijah. The, the bed had the best GPS that one can ever have. Flying all around. But by the commandment of Jehovah, this bed went straight to where Elijah is. If you believe in your God and you have trusted the word of God, hear me by the word of God. God knows you. God knows where you are. If only you have become so obedient unto God. It may be true that you are, you are going under the heat of your life. But by the instructions of God, there has been someone that has been sent by God. A person that you probably may not believe that this is someone that God is sending unto you. What I want to make you understand is trust God. Trust who? God. Many of us trust ourselves. Many of us trust people. Many of us trust pastors, churches. We trust nations, government. We trust all other people because we see them. Yet for us to trust this God that we believe that he exists, it has become a problem. I want you to change your mind this day that let us trust this God because he can do things beyond our imagination. The Bible says that this animal took the food unto Elijah. And he ate it. After being fed by these ravens for a while, the brook by which Elijah was also cooling himself got dry because of the drought. And God asked him to move forward. You know, life is in stages. Sometimes you feel like things are going on well. You are enjoying the environment God will give us directions in times of our troubles and our, 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 our problems. There is always directions. He says that he will not let any problem that will, is more than us come to us. But such that is common unto man. And that when the problems come, he will make a way out of it. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Elijah was by the brook. It has been, it is dried. Where am I going to get food, for water from? Even when the birds bring the, the, the kebab or they bring the food or the wache or whatever, after eating it, there wouldn't be any drink to drink. There would be no water. But whilst Elijah was thinking about the next move, God has already made a provision. Whilst Elijah was thinking about what to do in life at the present time, God has already made a provision. What Elijah needed to do is to listen to the voice of Jehovah. Whom are you listening to? To yourself or to God? Is it because we don't see this? I pray that the church will understand that there is a God who exists. And that human eyes cannot see him. It is those that believe that he exists and he is the rewarder of those that diligently seek him. These are such people that God blesses and causes his miracles to come in their lives. Because he will reward us when we diligently seek him. 
Whom are you listening to? The Bible says that Elijah opened his ears unto the cry or unto the voice of God. And the God of heaven gave him another step forward. He gave him some directions that go to Zarephath. I have prepared a woman there to feed you. He didn't tell the name of the woman. He didn't tell where, he li where she lives, in which house, even though God knew. But God told him to go to the city. And the Bible says that Elijah went very hungry. And when he got there, right as he entered the city, he saw this woman gathering sticks. And he said, Madam, how are you? Can I have some water, please? Water. Praise the Lord. And the Bible says that this woman was so nice to strangers. And she decided to go and fetch some water for Elijah. And on the way going, Elijah said, and can you please get me something to eat too? So, oh, say, you have asked for something that is very difficult. It is difficult because I have nothing in the house. The only thing I have is flour. It is not even baked yet. And a little oil that I have come right now to get some sticks. Fetching, I'm fetching some sticks to go cook this. This is my last meal. I wish I could have enough to give you. I wish I have more to feed you as well. But what I have is so even, it's so small that after my son and I have finished eating that baked, when it is baked, we would have nothing else but to die. Upon that statement, Elijah looked straight into this woman's eyes and said to her as we read, Thank God that you have something little to feed on. But this is what I want you to do first. Go and prepare that which you want to do. But please bring me some first. I don't mind how much you are going to give to me, but bring to me some first. And after you have done what you're supposed to do, go back and feed on it. If it were to be you and I. If it were to be you and I, there will be insults. There will be insults. You know, church, Many a times we, we close our ears to the voice of God. We close our ears to the voice of God. You know, sometimes when God gives us instructions, rather than us opening our ears to the voice of God and following the, the, the directions of God, we look around us and we try to think and make sure we understand the the. the, the directions of God, the divine instructions given to us with human reasoning. Amen. We try to reason the directions of God with human reasoning. Listen, obedience to divine instructions. Obedience to divine instructions bring great divine manifestations. Jesus told the disciples, the mother said to him, them that whatsoever that he asks you to do, do it. Whatever he asks you to do, meanwhile, he has not to told them what he was about to do. But whatever he asks you to do, do it. Because the mother has seen something in this man. Jesus just told them that, listen, we, 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 need, we need wine. Jesus is not a brewer. He doesn't brew wine. Yet when they were in shortage of wine, they went to him for a miracle. He did not command wine to come. People these days are running much more after miracles. But how to get miracles, many people don't do it. Amen? Amen. Divine instructions will always take us to great and greater forms. We will receive great and greater forms of great min divine manifestations. Fill these jars with water. And after they've done that, take a cup 
and serve it. Right there, they realize that something has taken place. Go and get me one first. And after I'm full, go and eat yours. The Bible says that this woman did according to what this prophet of God said to her. And when we read it, I don't know whether you took notice of it. The Bible says that in verse 14. No, verse 13. And Elijah said to her, do not fear. Go and do, do as I have said. But make me a small cake first. From it first. And bring it to me. And afterward, some for yourself and your son. For that says the Lord God of Israel. 14. The bean of flour shall not be used up. That is the word of God. It will not be used up, nor shall the jar of oil run dry until the day the Lord sends rain on the earth. So she went away and did according to the word of Elijah. And she, listen, and she and he, meaning that initially it was this woman and the son who were in need, who were just at the point of death. But the Bible says that when this woman became so obedient to the instructions that were given to her, the Bible says that, and she and he and her household. So when God starts to bless us after our obedience unto him, the blessing does not only rest upon us, but it extends to the people that are around us. That is why when you become so blessed by God, anyone that comes within your sphere becomes blessed. When God blesses you, even your chicken in your household become blessed. Praise the Lord. The roaches in your household become blessed. Everyone around you becomes blessed. Hallelujah. J Joseph went to Potiphar's house with the blessings of God. Even when they were being, he was being punished of sins that he did not commit. Because of the blessing that was upon his life, the, the household of Potiphar got blessed. I hereby declare unto you, church, may God's blessings soak you up. And this woman and her child and her household, they all got blessed. They fed on it. I want you to understand that the little you have even when you eat it, you will die. Do you hear me? The little you have, when you eat it, you will die. So when God asks you to give him a little more, a little out of that little, some, some people have become so much into the little they have. And they think that nothing can come out of it. I want to let you understand that what you have cannot even support you. It can't. So listen to the instructions that God is giving to you. Because if you are able to take first of God, many things will happen in your life. You know, so many things took place in this woman's life. When you read the scriptures, well, so many things went on. And I, I was able to figure out to get, I think, about four or five of them. So many things. There are so many characters that you can find out of this woman. You may ask yourself, how could God know that there is a woman there that can feed Elijah? Is God that so wicked? Didn't God know that this woman had just a little? Didn't God know? He knew it. That this woman had just a little that she's feeding on. When Elijah said to her, she did not, see, he did not tell her that when you do this or go and do this, then the God, God will make, no, 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 no. You do this first for me and after everything is done, listen, God of heaven is about to visit you. Amen. This woman, number one, she set herself or she prepared herself to be used by God. She made up her mind that she will be a channel of blessing in her life. She made up her mind that I will be a channel of blessing. So when she met Elijah and Elijah asked her, go fetch me some water, she stopped immediately what she was doing. A stranger. And she set for to go look for water for her. She set herself apart. 
she set herself apart. The eye of the Lord is moving around. And God is watching and looking. God wants to bless somebody. A person that is ready to be blessed. A person that falls within the pipeline of blessing. How could the Lord of heaven bless lepers? Maybe next time I may be talking about that. These people were just rejected out of the city. Living somewhere, minding their own business. But God's voice has been spoken, has spoken somewhere. And because they had the heart to serve, the heart to give, the heart to love people, the Bible says that whilst they were there, they made a decision. Not knowing that the decision that they were making was in line with the plan of God. So whilst they were taking steps, simple steps, in the forest, I don't know whether they had shoes on or not, but God was able to make their steps sound like chariots into the ears of their enemies. May it be your portion. Amen. That your obedience will transfer power to fight against your enemies. Your obedience to the word of God will cause your enemies to fall under you. Your obedience to the voice of God will make your enemies run before you. In the name of Jesus. Amen. These people, these men, lepers went and their enemies had already gone. And the Bible says that they ate. You know, those days too, it was farming. It was farming. They ate and they hit some. And after they finished eating and they, they've had enough, and they've hidden some there, then they went back into the city and told them that we have found so many good stuff. Come and enjoy. Number two, this woman was very hospitable. She had the heart to receive visitors. Hebrews 13, 1 and 2. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 1 and 2 says, Let brotherly love continue. Verse 2, do not forget to entertain strangers. For by so doing, some have unwill unwillingly entertained angels. Do not forget to entertain strangers. When they come into your house, when they come into the church, when they visit your workplace, some of you are so rude at your workplace that a stranger came to you because of your rudeness, you let your blessings bypass you. Especially people that sit, if you are listening to me, listen and listen carefully. People that are always at the front desk. Some of them are so rude that when you enter there, you, you, you don't even have the appetite to speak to them. But because of your need, you just have to stand there. Many of you, many of us have been tested by angels and have made our blessings bypass us. May it not be our portion. There was a woman that was in need of a baby. She had been praying and asking God for a long time for baby. And one day, while she was at her house, she was very rich, though, very, very rich. She saw someone knocking at her gate. She went, and it was this crazy man, a madman, serious, very dirty. Saliva all out of her mouth. She was, the guy was dirty. And all the guy wanted was that she begged her and asked this woman, please, I'm hungry. And out of that sort of heart, the woman ran into her house. God, it was a movie, but I learned from it. The woman ran out of her house, took the best plate she had, put some food on, and came back to this guy and gave it to him. The way the guy ate it, so rough, he even wanted to chew the plate. And after she had, he had finished, he just left and went. And as the movie showed that the moment he got out of the house, he turned into the real being and blessed the woman. The woman did not know it. A year later, when he came back, the woman had a baby. 
And that was where he revealed to him the woman. That that day, do you remember some time ago when I came, a, a madman came? No, no, I think it was a, a, a prophet or someone came to the woman and said, do you remember a madman that came into your house and this, 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 this? Uh, it, is, it was an angel of God that was sent to you. Many of us have left our angels, our blessings bypass us. Because they will look at them, they are not in the suit we are in. They don't live in the houses we live in. They don't smell like us. They have no education like us. They don't have the same mindset as ours. But let me tell you one thing. God is about to do something in your life. Only you just have to open your heart and receive people. Yeah. Praise the Lord. This is all I have, the woman said. I just have to go eat it with my baby and we will die. Not knowing that God has a plan. I strongly believe that the Lord of heaven has a plan for each and every one of us. Amen. His plan is not evil. His plan is not to bring shame onto us. His plan is not to destroy us, but to bring us to an expected end. An end of glory. An end of glory. An end of glory. But all we need to do is to have a mind that is set upon God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. This woman was very hospitable. We must entertain strangers. Another thing was that she was so generous. This woman was very generous. Many of us don't have that gift. We don't have that gift. Everything belongs to me. It is very hard to give. You don't give to people. You don't give to friends. You don't give to pastor. You don't give to your wife. You don't give to your friend. Nothing but all the time you want from people. Ask yourself, when was the last time you blessed someone? When was the last time? The Bible says that Cornelius, a Gentile, a Gentile in the book of Acts, God sent a, 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 an angel to him and said to Cornelius, your prayers and your arms giving have become a memorial before God. Your prayers and your arms given. Your generosity has become a memorial. It has built something before God. All the time, God looks at this thing. Cornelius was a Gentile, but because of his love for God, his generosity, his prayers, God drew him out of that state and brought him and made him part of the children of God. Don't let us believe that God does not see us. God sees us. He is looking at you and you too. God is looking at, he sees everything that we do. Anything, anything, your one dollar that you bring as an offering, I'm not saying don't do it. If that is all you have, that is fine. God sees it. Your 20 dollars, God sees it. Your million dollars, God sees Anything that you do, God sees it. And always God knows whether you are actually doing something out of your innermost being. Or it's because everybody is doing so, you are also doing it. This woman was very generous. Proverbs chapter 22, 9 says that he who has generous eyes will be blessed. He who has generous eyes will be blessed. You come to church or you go to the gathering of God. Nothing. Nothing. Please let us change our mind. Why? Because we don't have. We do <laughs> she also built believed in God and trusted in God's servants. When the man of God gave him the word, she believed in God and trusted in that servant's word. Second Chronicles chapter 20 verse 20 says that believe in God and you shall be established. Believe also in his prophets, his people, his messengers, and you will prosper. Sometimes when men of God or women of God speak, most especially when we are of the same age and when the, we are older than them, or for some reason, whilst the word of God comes, you take it as a word of a man. I know of a, a, a friend. He's here in this country, and we were all in Ghana. We came here. I think he's in, yeah, he's in this city, Bronx. When a preacher is preaching, rather than taking notes, he'll be marking. All he writes it's mistakes. Every time he writes mistakes, mistakes, and he keeps writing them. 
And when everything is done, he will gather some people and we'll be telling them, did you hear this? Did you hear this? That's not how you do it. That's not. Meanwhile, I've never heard this person preach before. Let us not take the words that come from God's pulpit as words of men. But let us take it as God, the word of God. Another thing too she did was that she changed her thinking, which we have done. We've talked about we must change our thinking. She changed her thinking. Um, in Luke chapter 5, verse 5, um, when Peter and her, his friends had gone to sea and they went and they had nothing, and Jesus met them and asked them to use their boat. And after he had done that, he told them to go back to the sea and fish again. Peter said to them that, Lord, Master, we, uh, we, we've done everything we know to do as far as fishing is concerned. Actually, I even have a degree in fishing. And after he had said anything and everything that he knows of, he said one thing, but by your word, I will go. Initially, I did it by my understanding of fishing. I did it by my knowledge of fishing. But this time, I'm not going according to what I know or believe. But I'm going according to your word. Amen. That is how we hold God. Sometimes we pray and we don't pray to God according to his word. If we hold God by his word, you said this, you told me to do this. I have done it and I'm looking up to you for a change. I believe you. I trusted you. I know you can do it. Your word is giving me inspiration. This is what you want me to do and therefore I am about to do it. God, show forth yourself. By your word. I will do it. And he, Peter did it, and he got a lot. Likewise, this woman changed her thinking, and she also stood by the word that the prophet gave to her. The next thing, too, was that she gave, she understood the concept of first things first. First fruit, first thing, as far as God is concerned, first things in the sight of God. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all other things shall be added. First thing first, first fruit. Make me a small cake first. Make me a small cake first. Don't go and sit down there and eat your share. Then you bring mine to me. No, but make me a small cake first. A small what? Say a small cake. A small cake. Meaning that the part that this prophet was taking was smaller than what the woman was going to use. But make me a small cake first. And when you are done that, go and spend yours. And I promise you by the power of Jehovah, you will have much more to live on until there is rain. The first, the first always sets a pattern for the rest. When we are able to understand first thing first, it sets up a pattern for the others. It sets us a foundation for the others. If the foundation gets destroyed, he, um, pro, Psalm 11 verse 3, if the foundation gets destroyed, what would the righteous do? If we are able to understand first things of God first, other things will follow. God said that I'm giving you $10.00. First thing first, give me one dollar out of the ten. First, and when you are done that, go and spend the nine dollars. But the church, the children of God will say, no, I don't believe in this. Why is the church taking this money? From th that is what they think. Why is the church taking this money from me? Why is the pastor taking this money from me? But they don't believe and understand that it is the principle that God wants to use to bless us. And they, they, they think that it, the church is after their money. The church is after their money. If God causes you to lose your life today, what would you do with the ten and the one? We always think about, I have these bills to pay. It is true. Everybody has bills to pay. <laughs> Praise the Lord. What we say is such that you will be blessed by God. Let's understand God's principles. And I strongly believe that the Lord God will bless us. We spend much time on our own things, our own things, and we forget God. Let us seek God first. Bring me first, first, first. Make me first, some first. Then go and spend on the others. Now someone give me $1, $1, $1, $1, $10. Or $10, $10, $10. Anything, 10, $2, 10, uh, um, $20, 10. I'll give it back to you. I won't take it. If you have it, <laughs> you give it to me. 
If it is one dollar, I need ten. If it's ten, I need ten. If it is hundred, I need ten. Anything you have, ten. Aha, uh -huh, ten. Is it ten? Good. Ten. Ten. You, I won't give yours to you. <laughs> Praise the Lord. This is the principle that I was telling you about. First thing first. This is all the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. This is all the woman had to spend on. And after this is done, I'll, I'm dead. I don't have any money. It's just like the tithe we talk about. But the prophet said, go and make me a little first. And when I, you are done with that, go and spend the others. God says that if I bless you with this, out of that which I've given to you, give me one-tenth out of it first and spend on the rest. You have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And one. God says that, give me this one dollar first and go and spend all this. And when you spend all this, I will bless you. But the church is saying that this thing is not going to do me anything unless I spend this one dollar. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Why do I have to give this one dollar to the church? Because you are thinking of giving it to the church. You always get the blessings of the church. The blessings of the church is that when you are sick, pastor will come and pray for you. That I will do. But the blessings of God, you will not get it because you gave it to the church. Praise the Lord. But make it your mind that if God says that one tenth out of all is mine, present it unto God, be faithful unto God on this. And the God of heaven will ensure that this ten, this nine that you have, you will eat and you will eat and you will eat. Listen, people that pay their tithes and give God first, even their skin color, I always say this, check it and you'll see it. Their skin color changes. Their skin color is even different. People that spend this, they are always stressed out. They are always stressed out. Why? Because they don't have money. I don't have money. I don't have money. Oh, I don't have money. I don't have money. And because they always talk about I don't have money, they are always stressed out. And they never get money to. First thing what? First. And the Bible says that when the woman did that, it was not only her and their son, but the family members also came and ate on that same thing. The uncle came and ate on it. Auntie came and ate on it. They, uh, meanwhile, if it was not this first, plus that, she would have died and gone. The problem is that when the money gets increasing, when it is one dollar, it's not a problem. But when we begin to add more to this, and this starts to increase, to the extent that you realize that the one time that you have to give to God can buy you a Mercedes Benz, you say to yourself that why do I have to give one time that can buy a Mercedes Benz to me, to God? When the money of your tithe becomes so big, you see that that money can solve a problem in your life. And because you can see that, you feel that if I spend on this, my life will be better. Let me promise you this. You are digging your own life. And you are messing your own life as far as your finances are concerned. The one that gave you this has power to make you spend on this. And yet, you will survive. Praise the Lord. Go Go home and do this research. J.C. Penney. How many of you know J.C. Penney's store? You know, okay. Go home and read about J.C. Penney. I don't know it is John Charles or something, Charles Penny or something. I don't remember the full name. But go home and do the research on this man. When he stopped paying tight, what happened to him? Go home and search it. When he stopped paying tight, what happened to him? And when he realized that by stopping the generosity that he was doing, 
something was happening and she, he changed his mind and began to do the, 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 the good stuff or the st- move on to do what he's supposed to do, what then happened? Before then, the store was so small, thinking that everything would be fine with that. And was doing, she, he decided not to do anything, even though he was in the church. But one day when God spoke to him and he changed his mind and he decided to give on to God, J.C. Penney started moving all around, all around. God wants to bless us. But this thing here that you are spending on is blocking your blessings and has taken your blessings out of the hands of God. This thing can bring healing unto you. This can solve many problems in your life. This can change your life for the better. Amen? Our first always sets a pattern for the rest. And God wants the first of all. Don't play with the first things of God. When God says, don't eat this, or don't play with this, please don't play with it. You can eat all the fruit in this garden, but this one fruit, don't touch it. The devil came and said, hey, forget about God. That one, touch. And when they went to touch it, it messed up their whole life. May you not, I pray, may you not, 